This is just a very quick walkthrough of SiteGlide. So you can sign up on our website using the Get Started button. You get a free account on our business plan. Once you do that, you end up on our, our welcome page in the portal where you can start creating sites. You can build sites using our demo or our framework for using Bootstrap 5 that helps make um, building sites quick and easy or build a completely uh, custom site, site from scratch. So whichever you click, it then asks you for a site name, <clears throat> a URL, and whether you want to, and it'll pre preset those for you in terms of whether you'd want to install Studio or our demo. Once you've created a site, you can manage all of your sites and clients and users, and modules, and all sorts of things using the left-hand menu in Portal. If we, just, if we just quickly go into one of our sites, just going to pick a demo site here you can view the site you can edit the site or you can actually manage the site itself from portal so we're just going to go into that quickly from here you can add users you can install modules you can add domains um, set up billing even copy the site there's all sorts of things you can do from here just under modules you'll see which modules have been installed and which you could update as well. So just quickly run an update while we're here, updating the e-commerce module. It is worth reading the change log before doing that. I happen to know what, what that includes, but it's worth, uh, worth checking the change log first and seeing what other, other um, modules you might want to install. So that's just updating. You can click change log and it'll take you off and tell you about those those changes here, adding new features such as tax codes, volume pricing, that kind of stuff. Do check this out if you're curious as to what's changed over the last few months. Things move pretty quickly. Um, and you'll see that that now has been updated for the latest version. So we'll go back to site details, go to admin. And from here, you'll see that we can manage the site itself on the dashboard. It takes you to various different places, creating pages, you've got all our documentation, release notes, and even connecting up to Zapier to uh, import and export information. Along the left, you'll see these typical um, menu items, depending on what you've got installed. For example, if you don't have e-commerce installed, this won't show, uh, but typically this is what you'll see. We'll have a quick look into CMS first. This is where you would build out your site and manage all your pages. And here you'll see various pages that come with our demo site that, um, that this is using. But you, you would obviously build the pages you want. We go into a particular one. Get some pretty standard settings, give it a name, URL, choose whether it's the home page, um, searchable uh, for search engines, pick your template, and then you've got control over things like um, page title, SEO, and social media settings, that kind of stuff, as well as if you want to make this page secure using our secure zones feature. And then you'll see we've got either Studio or Code View. Um, if you don't use our Studio product, which is a great tool for designing and building sites really easily, it will just say editor. But if you go, um, if you do have it installed and you click Studio, this is then our visual builder um, for sites. So this will show you the, uh, the layout library of all the different sections and uh, design elements that you can use from Studio. And all you need to do is literally drag one in that you want to use and start editing. And you've got a normal editor here to be able to make things bold and do all sorts of formatting there. You can even move things up and down. Um, so you've got, a, got all the tools you need to manage, um, just leave that one up for example, to manage your pages. And then when you're ready, you can save changes, you can view those changes and work on the page as you go. So we just added this new section here. So that's the um, design view, that's to build out pages. Clients might want to build out landing pages or you might use it to, to build, build pages for them. Then you've got code view as well, which allows you to get a little bit um, further into SiteGlide and use some more of the functionality. So most of those elements will be static content for now, um, but then you could come into here and insert specific content. So you can actually build out um, using Studio, the, the design view, and then replace certain content with dynamic content. So let's say you wanted to insert a different image, you could come into here and let's just go, go here actually, go insert image, go to images, Go to the blog as an example, put one of the blog post images in, and that will just create that for you. 
If you want to keep some of the standard formatting, you could drop that in as well. So let's just drop that in here. And we'll, we'll hit save. There we go and view that page again. Let's now replace that image with the one we just put in. So you can replace with all sorts of dynamic content from SiteLight. As you build out more, you can do more things with it, whether it's inserting modules, any custom databases that you built that we call web apps, um, forms, search, e-commerce, all sorts of things that you can output on the page. If you're a if you're a developer, um, if you don't do that much development, it's still pretty simple to do. The toolbox does a lot of it for you. It'll, it'll write it for you. But it's worth having a developer uh, on your team or um, having an agency that you work with to help you with that. You also have a rollback feature here under history. You can roll back to different versions of that page. Moving on, the most important next thing would be file manager where you would then come and upload imagery. So we just use that blog one. You can come in here and upload from desktop and manage, move move things around, create folders, that kind of stuff. So you've got a full file manager for asset management. Uh, content sections allow you to build just reusable uh, sections for the website. Forms. You can build contact forms, e-commerce forms, all sorts of things here, uh, and manage the subscriptions that, um, or the submissions of those forms as well, and see who's using it. Um, so you can view the submissions or you can edit the form itself. Just going into one quickly, if we enter the contact form, edit. You can control all of the fields themselves. You can add your own fields and you can then do things like connect them up to put them in a secure zone or when somebody fills it in it would add that user to a secure zone you can um, link it up to payments from e-commerce write an autoresponder to go to the customer and a workflow to go to the team or your clients yeah. clients team as well as put recapture on there to to reduce spam after forms have a quick look at categories these are extremely useful for managing things like whether it's blog posts or managing products this is a universal category system across the whole of site glide which is really powerful meaning you can link things up uh, between completely different areas you can link products with blog with anything and manage it that way Company information is a very basic one. That's just a tool for managing a logo and some standard information that'd be used across the site. Um, you can build your own version of this as a web app if you wanted to, but it's just something we've we've created as a as a default. Next up is URL redirects. This is where, when you're migrating from another platform, you you might want to import any old URLs and redirect them to a new URL. So you just simply do the source and the destination and the type. Next up, we have modules. So these are modules that we've built um, to help you get the most out of the platform. They're all actually based on web apps. So you could build your own versions of these or you can um, go in and customize them. That's something that many platforms don't naturally offer is the, the, the ability to customize modules and make them your own. You can come into any of our modules and see the standard fields, but you can then also add your own custom fields and fully customize it. You can link it up with things like secure zones as well. So taking the blog for example, you could create new items or manage items. Yeah. And once you learn how to do one type of item, it's basically the same throughout the whole platform. So giving something a name, the URL, any release date or expiry date if you want to manage your marketing um, releases, then there's custom fields that have been created that again you can manage. So imagery, text, that kind of stuff, rich text editor here, as well as then things like SEO settings, any categories, um, and even location if you wanted to put those, those kind of items on a map. Lots of other modules, we'll go into those separately, but we have events, FAQs, managing menus. Let's just have a quick look at menus, for example. This is something you would need to do. So this is the main menu on the website itself. We just go back to here. You might then want to actually put one of these inside another or move them around or change the name of them. There's all sorts of things you can do with our, our menu builder. Very quick look at secure zones. Secure zones allow you to make content secure and manage things like custom uh, customer portals, uh, intranets, membership sites, 
lots of different things. You can put items in secure zones, you can put people in secure zones, there's all sorts of things you can do. It's just a test, a test account as an example. Next up we have web apps. Combining web apps and secure zones is really, really powerful. That's where you might do something like a custom portal or membership site. But here we just have a very basic uh, gallery example. You might want to just build um, a web app where you just outlet, uh, output some pictures in a, in a photo gallery. That will be a module very, very soon. We've opened up modules to our community of agencies around the world who are building their own modules available for people to use. And I know that the gallery is one of those. So that's an example of, of building a custom web app. It's very, very similar to modules because modules are based on them. You can import, export data extremely easily. You can create new items and you can edit as well also search up here. Next up we have e-commerce. So under e-commerce it's it's again pretty similar. We've tried to make everything very similar and run off web apps as the kind of core. Uh, you can again customize e-commerce which isn't always possible in, in various platforms but you can add your own custom fields. It proves really really powerful. You can manage your currencies. That's managed here. Add in any new currencies if you want. Set up some default, ta default tax codes set your SEO as well, and just manage the general settings for e-commerce. We go into a product, any of those changes will then apply here. So you can make, release them uh, and set the expiry date. And it's just, again, very similar to web apps. You just fill in the fields you need. If you've got any custom um, fields, they'll appear as well. And then things like categories, SEO, location, pricing, set, obviously set pricing per currency. You can do single only, uh, single item pricing, have a sale and a uh, full price perhaps, as well as manage any volume pricing. Set up your tax codes, add attributes. If you've got different versions within a product, you can do inventory. All sorts of things are available and then you can customize on top. Under there you have orders. This is where any orders would come into setting up things like shipping options. You can do various types of shipping. We go into one of these, set the price for those. Then we've got discount codes. Just add a new one. So you can just give it a code. You can set the value, how many times people can use it, where it can be used, that kind of stuff. Again, you can apply it to categories as well. Do also have subscriptions. This is really useful for membership sites. So you might want to allow people to buy into a $50 per month or um, $1,000 a year, whatever it might be, subscription that people are signing up to. Um, and you can see the orders and discounts for those. Tax codes we bri briefly sort of looked at. You can set up uh, a new, new type of tax code, which currency it's for, what the code would be, that kind of stuff. Payment gateways. There are a few options here. The what default ones are Stripe, Authorize.net, and PayPal, but we do have um, a fully open uh, payment gateway platform, so you can connect up to anybody else. And again, those will be modules available in the in the marketplace very very soon. So you set all of that up, and then there's some just general e-commerce settings as well. Have a quick look at CRM. This is extremely customizable, and because of that, we don't start with too many core fields. So there's some standard fields. You then add your own custom fields to fully set up your CRM to suit your needs. So you could build a Salesforce style CRM. You could build a um, real estate CRM. You could build an internal tool. You could build pretty much anything, a membership site as well. So this is all ready for you to customize. Again, getting data in and out is one of our core um, beliefs. So we make sure that that's really easy. You could use Zapier, you could use our API access and manage data so yeah adding users all sorts of things available in the CRM we'll do a separate video on this in detail and then finally we've got well two more things on site manager this is more for developers but um, got a full code editor if you don't want to use our CLI and run things locally which I'll show you in a second as well where you can manage layouts you can manage CSS files and assets all of that kind of stuff all in a um, nice to use editor that's just kind of looking here so you can manage it could be very very basic uh, CSS or it could be more complex um, complex code so then 
we have something called custom field sets. This is more for setting up very small, well, uh, setting up separate collections of data and adding them to other things. We'll look at that separately. And some general things you'd want to set up is templates uh, so that you can reuse content throughout the site, things like your headers and footers. You'd set up a normal page template and then you'd apply your headers and footers into this as well. Mm. So you see in here we've included a header and included a footer. They're managed here. And you can put whatever you want into here. HTML code that you want to add. The same with footers. Code snippets, again, you might want to uh, put all of your Google Analytics code or whatever it might be into there. Got some standard system pages which you can manage, 404s, password resets, that kind of stuff. Uh, same with system emails. We do have a whole integrations tab to allow you to set up recapture. Um, Google Maps, Google Project Key, uh, Zapier as well for connecting up to various other tools. Again, if you make data really accessible. Got some migration tools if you're importing from uh, tools like Business Catalyst, which is uh, end of life. Got some import and export logs as well to show you what you've been doing with data and um, show you what data you can get out of the platform. And finally, reporting. This is going to grow over time as the as the product continues to add more more features. But this is where currently you can get all of your users and you could filter that information down based on all sorts of information, whether it's secure zones, when they were created, um, all sorts of columns. So as you add more columns, you will have more data to filter on. And then once you select those people, you can do certain actions. You could delete, you could add a secure zone, and that will keep um, expanding as we go. You've got the same thing there with cases. So you can pick a specific form and see data based on those cases. So that is a whirlwind tour of uh, the Cyclide platform. Hopefully it gives you an idea of what it's useful for and how easy it is to get started. One thing I didn't show actually more for developers is rather than having to use the, or as well as using our code editor, you can actually run our CLI. So our CLI is a tool, sort of a replacement for FTP, which is a bit of a dying dying tool now and not as secure as it could be. So CLI is where from your command line interface, so terminal on a Mac or command prompt, you can run certain commands to update pages uh, from your favorite sort of IDE. We, yeah, we do have a, a very open API for you to manage data from. So you can come across to the API here and see all the different things that you can do with it. This is constantly being updated to match any new functionality in Cyclides. So you'll always be able to get data in and out. And if that's a bit too complex, then definitely would recommend having a look at our integrations. You can build any kind of integrations with Zapier. Uh, across to MailChimp, Active Campaign, Salesforce, uh, whatever tool you want to use, MailChimp as an example. Yeah. I think that pretty much covers most things. Uh, do ask away on our live chats. You've got chat down here if you have any questions or check out some of our other videos. Thank you.